pork chops in bulk at Costco. If you had noticed, our southern border's a little bit open. I think you've made a mistake here. I would rather uh, negotiate with a bucket full of rattlesnakes. What could go wrong? This is your 1 September update for Iraq and Afghanistan update and commentary. All right, so let's start with Afghanistan. I have a uh, unique source that indicated that U.S. there are some U.S. forces still in the region, not in the country, in the region. U.N. commits to staying in Afghanistan with basic services close to collapse. So the U.N. Secretary General expressed concern at the deepening humanitarian and economic crisis in the country. And he says, now more than ever, Afghan children, women, and men need the support and solidarity of the international community. Not sure how we're gonna secure those efforts. I guess we'll find out. Uh, Went on to say that Afghanistan is coping with a severe drought. Uh, If you'll remember, there was, I want to say, a CNN story a couple days ago that uh, the Australian press was was ridiculing, talking about how climate change was responsible for the rise of the Taliban. I think there's about 10 things more responsible for the rise of the Taliban than climate change. Uh, at any rate, the uh, UN Secretary warned that $1.3 billion funding requirement had not been met and that there was a lack of supplies in the now Taliban-controlled nation. The World Health Organization, to the rescue, the WHO, also warned that despite Monday's air delivery of 12.5 metric tons of medical supplies that should cover the needs of about 200,000 people, it was still not enough. Now, anybody who has been to Afghanistan or knows anything about Afghanistan knows that those supplies are going to be sucked up by the warlords. You know, it's not going to necessarily get to the people. It's going to be sucked up by the warlords. The spokesman at the from the WHO went on to say that um, the agency was planning two more supply flights this week, but they want continual flights to restore basic services. Huh. Wonder who would pay for that. I wonder who would provide that kind of lift. Uh, Let's see, in Geneva, the UN Refugee Agency repeated its call to neighboring states to keep their borders open. So the, the countries that border Afghanistan, they're pleading with them to keep their borders open to allow Afghan refugees to go through the borders without documentation. What could go wrong? I have no idea. What could possibly go wrong? But they're saying about 3.5 million people have been displaced within the country and are going to be probably looking to leave. Now, this is just a little tidbit of information that I that I got here. At least 45% of the Afghan population is below the age of 15. But this is all part of, you know, the UN. The UN is saying, you know, it's for the children, et cetera, et cetera. It's always for the children which is kind of horseshit, but nevertheless, that was an interesting tidbit. 45% of the Afghan population below the age of 15. Uh, so UN is particularly concerned about the rights of girls, including sexu- sexual and gender-based violence, as well as their right to education. Guys, the Taliban owns the country. It, this is what you're dealing with. That's who these people are. And I've often said, and I even made a little meme of my own little saying, that I would rather uh, negotiate with a bucket full of rattlesnakes than negotiate with the Taliban. These are not good people. And no amount of economic pressure, which is what I think they're, uh, let's see, let let me look here, hang on, hang on. Well, anyway, someone where in here, they were talking about the pressure they were going to bring on the Taliban, you know? It's kind of like, I think Donald Rumsfeld said it at the beginning of the Afghan war. I think he's the one who said it, that you can't bomb somebody into the Stone Age if they're already in the Stone Age. 
you know, you can't bring economic pressure on somebody who doesn't really have a lot to lose. You know, they're controlling the poppy, the poppies for exporting that. It's not like it's a normal place. So let's move on to Iraq. Actually, some interesting things in Iraq now. And, and I recommend if you're interested in this stuff that you start to keep a little more of an eye on Iraq coming up here in the fall. Uh, got some elections coming up and stuff. Could get a little bit sporty. Got a few events coming up that could be important. So, um, from Iraq. After the Americans leave, there will be no weapons in the street, Alamari says. says. So now this is the head of the Fatah Alliance, which is Iran's oldest proxy in Iraq. He said on Tuesday that the Iraqi Prime Minister made a mistake by arresting the leader of the popular mobilization forces that are known as the PMF. Yeah, made a mistake. Oops. Kind of like when, you know, the mob boss gets arrested in the States. You know, hey, uh, I think you made a mistake here, you know? Oh, yeah, our mistake. We did we didn't mean to arrest the boss. Yeah. That's who that's who pays our salaries. It's, at any rate, so the uh, PMF commander is uh, pledging to uh, contain the uncontrolled weapons once U.S. forces withdraw at the end of 2021. So that's one of the events. One of the key events is the withdrawal of the U.S. at the end of 2021. Now, it's supposed to be the withdrawal of all combat forces, but there's still apparently some clarification needed on exactly what that means. And I will kind of get to that here in a sec. Uh, said that the presence of the U.S. forces uh, in Iraq, all foreign forces must be ended. Their presence presence must be ended by the end of the year. After the Americans leave, there will be no weapons on the street. If a weapon appears, I will bear personal responsibility. This is al Amiri. Now, the chief of staff of the Iraqi army is saying that the Iraqi army is ready to take control after the U.S. forces depart. So obviously there's a lot of concern about an Afghanistan type event happening in here in Iraq. And it's much more it is much more unlikely here. But a couple of reasons. One, uh, the the Shiite backed militias are already here. The Iranian influence is already here. Uh, so it, it won't be I don't think I don't foresee it being nearly as volatile as Afghanistan was. Um, so went on to say that uh, the American the American forces cut their support uh, last May, and the Iraqi forces are ready uh, for the next stage that follows, which is the U.S. exit from Iraq. So there obviously there's concerns about replicating the Afghanistan scenario. So yeah, there was an agreement for the full withdrawal of U.S. combat forces that would take place by the end of the year. Iraq uh, still will need the. Uh, the coalition support for armament, training, and air support. Uh, so, now, let's move on to commentary real quick. Hey, Donnie Ben. On to commentary. There are American citizens still stuck in Afghanistan. How many do you think there are? Well, we don't know. We don't know. It sounds like at least several hundred depending on who you talk to. So as I've stated before, based on this Afghanistan event, the status of ISIS and the Taliban is greatly enhanced. They're greatly emboldened. This was like a huge global recruiting commercial for ISIS. So if we think that ISIS is going to be reduced going forward, we're delusional. Ain't gonna happen. They are going to refit, they are going to reman, and they will be conducting follow-on operations not only in the region, but against the West, to include the United States. If you hadn't noticed, our southern border's a little bit open. Who's coming through there? Hmm, I don't know. Ooh, who has a relationship with the cartels, a business relationship with the cartels? Ooh, I don't know. Could it be 
terrorists? Yes, it could be freaking terrorists. That's exactly who it is, and they're coming through the southern border. So, I am confident. I would bet a freaking paycheck on it that we have got ISIS cells already inside the United States being trans being transferred, transported through the human trafficking and the drug network that the cartels have already established into the heartland of America. So, coming to a small town near you. All right, so America's position in the world stands greatly diminished still at this time. Allies, now this is geopolitically, I haven't talked a whole lot about this, but our allies are having to back away from us and they're having to reevaluate their relationships with other countries like Russia and China. Why? Because we've proven ourselves to be unreliable. Now, this is not me making this stuff up. This is coming from the foreign press. This is how I'm getting this information from the foreign press. Allies forced to reassess relationships with other countries due to criminally negligent lack of American leadership. Now, Australia in particular is affected by, uh, affected by this due to their proximity to China and the naval nature of their security issues. All right, so the Biden administration, along with the woke lackeys of the elite corporate media cabal, have they continue to gaslight the American people they continue to outright tell outright lies regarding the number of Americans left behind in Afghanistan. As I predicted a couple of days into doing these videos on the Afghan debacle, they have created an entirely new narrative touting the Afghan disaster as some sort of success. Zero responsibility taken, zero accountability for people within the administration who created this disaster. This administration is counting on the American people to forget. That's how stupid they think you are, and it should in insult the hell out of every one of the American people. Everybody should be insulted. They, ex they, they expect you, they are fully expecting you to go back to buying pork chops in bulk at Costco and picking the weeds out of your lawn and worrying about well, which day recycling has to go out to the curb. So I will simply say again, as I've said before, that sleepy Joe Biden should resign or be removed. Cackling Kamala should resign. Secretary of State, winking, deer in the headlights, blinking, should resign or be removed. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Hallam make millions at Raytheon Austin should resign or be removed. Chairman Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark Willie Nilly Nilly should resign or be removed. And I actually recommend the entire Joint Chiefs of Staff resign or be removed. So we, the American people, bear responsibility for this disaster. We are the ones to blame. We have allowed this to happen to our country. Additionally, we are the only ones who can fix it. So let me ask you a few questions. We know what the shiny object is, what everybody's paying attention to. They're paying attention to Afghanistan, the attention's on Joe Biden as an incompetent, feckless leader and the administration. What's the non-shiny object? Could it be the invasion of Europe and the United States with hundreds of thousands of refugees who haven't been fully vetted? Could it be a prima nocta event where the Muslim Brotherhood has figured out a way that if they can't force us out, they're going to breed us out. Kind of like in the Braveheart movie. And I want to know who's pulling the strings between behind sleepy Joe Biden and his cast of characters up there in D.C. 
Could all of this be by design? Heck, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying. Could it be the administrative state? Yeah, it could be. I don't know. I don't know who it is. But it sure as hell ain't Joe. And it's not cackling Kamala. It's just a question. And I, I have really no idea what the answer is. But let me ask you one last question. And I've asked it before. Do Americans still believe in freedom? Do you? Do we? Do we still believe in freedom? Well, then we've got to stop allowing the fundamentalist wokesters to get away with lies. We've got to stop allowing people like Jake Doogie the Wonder Boy Sullivan from changing the narrative. We've got to call these people out. We've got to stop allowing these people to escape accountability. Contact your congressmen and your senators and demand accountability. These people are actively destroying our country. America needs heroes. America needs warriors. That is each and every one of us. We are the only ones that can take our country back. We are the only ones that can take control. We are the only ones that can bring our government back to what it should be. So let's get to work and let's get something done. But what can I do? What can I do? Well, I've already mentioned one. You can call your senator. You can call your congressman. Let them know what you think about these issues. Demand accountability is one of them. But I want you guys to go over to the YouTube channel. On the John Curry YouTube channel, there is a series, a playlist there called Heroes Boot Camp. And it's a, it's a series of conversations between me and other people. Now there's just a couple of videos up there. But it's starting off, it's philosophical information that I think people should be thinking about. Some of it's pretty dense. But we will be getting to some nice short videos that will be educational. And the, uh, the idea there is to educate, educate, or educate, educate equip and inspire people, normal Joes, to take action in the world, to take America back. That's what it's all about. So, as I usually leave you, I will leave you again by saying, wherever you are in the world, have a great morning. Have a great evening. Have a good night. I will see all of you later. Curry from Semper Savage, a veteran-owned, family-operated company making the finest marinades and dressings on the planet. But we're more than just another company. Family's our core. It's our greatest joy and our greatest strength. We inspire people through personal connections and savage patriotism. We believe in the greatness of America. We travel all over the U.S. and have experienced the fundamental goodness of our people and the strength of our communities. We're achieving excellence while tirelessly pursuing perfection. We offer four delicious all-natural products. Savage Caesar, Savage Balsamic, Savage Centurion, and Savage Cider. They're Italian-style vinaigrettes that are more than just marinades or dressings. They're equally at home sautéing in the pan, baking in the oven, on the grill, or as a drizzle or dipping sauce. Take your food to the next level with Semper Savage. It's homemade flavor in a bottle, and you are gonna love it. Pour it on.